In the preceding video, we wrote the lightning strike program in sequential form, and it worked pretty good, but we can do better. This week, we're going to recognize the individual tasks within that program, and we're going to place them in methods. So we return back to our lightning strike program. If you remember this from the previous video, this gives us a way of calculating how far away lightning is uh, based upon how many seconds it takes the sound to reach our ears. And then we calculate the speed of sound and judge how many feet away the, uh, the lightning is. It gives us a chance to run away a little bit faster. Now we wrote the entire program in the main method. That is, we encapsulated every single step sequentially in that method. And the program works, so obviously that is a, a way that a problem can be approached. The problem with doing things that way is that you can't go very far. You suddenly find that you're repeating code, uh, that your logic gets a little bit twisted up. It becomes very difficult. So in this video, we're going to introduce a Java component called a method. In other languages, it's called a function or a procedure. A method allows us to encapsulate uh, lines of code that do one specific task. The advantage of the method is I can send it messages, it can send me a response back. I can also call the same method multiple times so I don't end up writing code over and over and over. Now there are a number of different kinds of methods. There are those methods that do not return a value and there are those methods that do return a value. There are methods that do not take any parameters and there are methods that take parameters, and there are permutations of each of those. So let's start out with something easy, something called a void function. A void function does not return a value. So whether it receives parameters or not is irrelevant. As soon as the method is complete and all of the logic has been processed, the logical flow returns back to where that method was called, and that's it. It doesn't return back any answer. So we'll start writing our first method in the lightning strike program by creating something called an introduction, an explanation of what the program does. If we scroll down here to the bottom, you can see that I have written a static void method called intro. And intro is going to do nothing but print out the instructions or the explanation of the program onto the screen when it gets executed. Now I have separated this code out. It is a body unto itself, public and static, uh, again visibility and the ability to use this without instantiating main. Uh, the the identifier rules uh, for everything else apply to the identifier name for your method as well. So I have written method here and you'll notice that right here I'm calling that method. I do so by using the identifier followed by a couple of parentheses which tells the compiler I'm not calling a variable or anything I am calling a method. So in the logical flow the program will start here in main, come down. It will read this instruction to call static void. It will stop here, go down to here, process one, two, three statements, and then exiting the, exiting the method will return back up here and resume processing right here after intro process, 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 down and out. So we execute this program now. It doesn't really do anything too spectacular that was uh, not in the original. We'll put, I think it was 7.2 seconds and it's 7,128 feet away. But you see now that we have this introduction printed up at the top of the screen. So avoid method, a method that does not return a value. While a void method has its uses, more often than not, we will want a function to return some kind of value. So that is, we're going to give it a single well-defined task, ask it to perform that task, and then re return the result back uh, into the rest of the program so that we can utilize that result.
So we have used the void method to print an introduction. Uh, moving down our lightning strike program, we're going to process the second necessity, which is to gather input from the user. And so in this case, we look at our new method and it's going to be called get seconds. So I, I like to call a method that is going to gather some input get uh, and then indicate in other types of functions that it is output or indicate that it is calculating. Just gives me and then somebody later a better idea of what that function, what that method is going to do. So in this case we need to go out and ask the user to give us the number of seconds from when they heard the sound uh, as opposed to seeing the lightning strike. If I ask the user to give me an input value, then I need to return that value from my method. And so I have declared instead of void, you see that our function get seconds is a double type. That means that once this is compiled, and it is prepared to execute, the program will be looking to receive a double data type from this function. And so you see here, I have declared an internal variable, a local variable called seconds, and seconds is going to take the input from the next double method over into seconds, and then the return statement, which is absolutely required, returns that value back into the calling logic. So we'll trace back up here to main and see what's going to happen. So as we saw before, we had intro, which prints the instructions out on the screen. Now we call get seconds. And get seconds, because it returns a value, can assign that using the assignment operator over into in delay. So in delay will contain uh, whatever the user gives us for input. So again, logic comes to here. It looks on the right side of the assignment statement to see what the value is. It sees that it is calling a method. That method is called. It uh, puts a prompt on the screen. It asks the user to input a value. That value is assigned to this local variable seconds. Seconds is then returned. And so this is all executed before the assignment operator is executed. That, whatever the user puts in, is assigned into in delay. And then, as we saw before, the logic proceeds. So if we input, come down here, let's, let's give it a new number, 10 seconds. Okay, it's uh, 9,900 feet away. I think we can outrun that. Now, when I mentioned that this was a local variable, I'm talking about something called scope. Scope is the visibility of a data element or even a method, that is where it can be seen and how it can be accessed. When I declare seconds within the body of this method, it exists from this moment until this moment. As soon as I leave the body of this method, seconds as a variable no longer exists, nor is seconds visible out here in the larger program. Seconds exist between this brace and this brace. And because this exists outside of that, seconds can't be seen, seconds can't be called. You can't do anything with seconds except within the body here. When I go to call the input stream, we run into a different kind of issue, and that is we had previously declared the scanner object uh, inside of main. If I do that, it is not visible inside of double. Main is a, a function, or I'm sorry, a method all to itself, and if I declare this in here, it becomes a local object inside of, inside of main. So I have moved it out to the class level, which now means that once I have instantiated this scanner object in input stream, I can utilize input stream anywhere in the rest of the functions that I'm calling. 
Thus far, we have seen two kinds of methods. We have seen a void method that doesn't return anything, and we have seen a value returning method in which a value was uh, obtained from the input of the user and then returned back into the program. We're going to write a third kind of method now, and that is the type that not only returns a value, but it receives a value as a parameter. And we see that right here in calc distance. Double in seconds, the data type and the identifier form a parameter for this method for calc distance. That means that when this method is called, a value must be passed between the two parentheses, and it must be of type double. The received value is treated as an internal or a local variable within the body of this method. So in seconds is brought in here. It is used as a part of the calculation. And we have an internal variable or a local variable called time. Time receives this calculation. And then time is returned back as the double uh, to the calling logic. So when main processes this, we ask the user how many seconds. That goes into in delay. The value in in delay in the variable in delay is passed as a parameter to calc distance. So if we put 10 seconds here, 10 is passed to in delay. 10 comes in as in seconds. So in seconds, the 10 is here, the 10 is here, the constant constant. Those uh, that expression returns the value to time. Time is returned back as a double. And so calc distance 10 is assigned to distance over here. And as soon as that's complete, the logic completes on. So this is a value returning function that receives a parameter. You can have a long list of parameters here. You're not limited to just one. Each one would be simply separated by a comma. Well, isn't main looking really nice now? It's just one method call after another. And this is the way your main method should, in general, look. You don't want to do too much processing within that. And as we get a little deeper into the object-oriented structure, uh, you'll see why you don't need to perform a lot of processing there. We're going to look at one more type of method, and that is a void method that takes a parameter. You understand everything that's going to happen here. When I call print results, which is right here, I'm going to pass the value of distance, which came from here, distance. I'm going to pass that as a parameter. It is going to print out the results. I formatted it a little bit now. And then uh, simply return back into logic the program. Main will then exit and the program will be done executing. Now you see something a little bit different in this parameter. I have added the modifier final. When I make, uh, when I put final in front of my parameter type and then my parameter identifier, that effectively makes it a constant parameter. That is, the value of in distance cannot be changed inside of this method. And so it's just a way of protecting the value. It's really not necessary here. I'm just outputting it, but I wanted to demonstrate it. All right, so method call, method call method call, method call. Simple and sweet. Let's execute this one last time. Oh gosh, let's say it's uh, 30 seconds away. So that's uh, 29,700 feet away. That lightning's a good ways away. I think we can continue playing golf. All right, good luck with your program. Uh, I hope this helps. Uh, in the development of your Java skills. These are class methods. We are going to expand in the next video into instance methods. Good luck. Pro tip. If you've seen a fully documented program, you've seen a lot of stuff that 
really at first doesn't make sense, especially if you come from another language like uh, C++. Um, the form that you're putting your documentation in, it seems odd and it seems weird, and it's got all these little at symbols and everything here. But there's a reason for that. I have gone and fully documented the lightning strike program. So I have a class um, header up here that explains what the class does. I've added the author tag right here. So at author, at version, uh, that information. These are very important and I'll show you why in just a second. I've come down here, documented what my constants are, explain that main is uh, used for execution here, not just for testing. And then each of the functions within there, again, has its own documentation. I explain what each of the methods does and then uh, document the parameters here. If you're using NetBeams, if you begin to type in this uh, Javadoc uh, format here, it will go and look up the uh, parameter uh, and place it in there for you. So you basically explain what each of the parameters is. There's just one, but you know there could be a half dozen here. Uh, same way down here, uh, it recognizes you have a return value and it allows you to put in what that return value is. So you're saying, who cares? You know, why, why do we have to go through all this special stuff? Well, I'm going to show you. Right click on your project and uh, the easiest way is come over here, right click on your project and hit Java doc. Watch this. Hey, there's your project. And here's all your stuff. Look at that. Those little tags uh, are a way of generating HTML files uh, that uh, you can read and you can read the documentation for your program. So everything that you've put in, uh, as far as the description goes, you know, if, if you're verbose, that's probably better. If you're just uh, put a few words in like me, eh, probably doesn't do too much. But anyway, Here's all your parameters. Uh, where's, uh, here's one with a return value, name of the method, the signature, the explanation that I put in as to what that method does, the parameters, the, dist uh, the distance as the return value. So this is Javadoc, and that's why we use those tags when we document a Java file. All right, out.